So today, what I want to talk about is something that might be a little bit of a secret. And we've been kind of doing some top secret work behind the scenes for, gosh, I don't know how long it's been, maybe a year or a year and a half. But it is my extreme pleasure to announce that we are going to be upgrading our ProBio product. Okay, and that's going to be happening really, really soon. So you might be asking yourself, why would we mess with such a, a, an amazing product? And the fact of the matter is there is probably no field of research in, in human nutrition that is exploding more right now than research centered around the microbiome. So, for example, here I just did a quick search on how many microbiome articles are in this scientific database PubMed. And you can see since about 2010, it has just absolutely exploded. So in about the last 10 years, you can see this literally exponential growth in the interest around the microbiome. So if you're not really familiar with what the microbiome is, let's just really talk quickly uh, about what it is. And very simply put, our microbiome is this collection of all these different microorganisms that live both on and inside of ourselves. And I think most of us uh, uh, assume that um, when we're talking about the microbiome, we're only talking about our gut. But in fact, we have these organisms that live all over us and in us everywhere. And the microbiome or these microorganisms that make up the microbiome can be a whole bunch of different things. They can be things like these primitive bacteria called archaea, they can be small single-celled organisms called protozoa. Even things we, we tend to think of being unhealthy, things like fungi and viruses, can actually make up our microbiome. And these healthy fungi, uh, fungi and these healthy viruses can actually give us health benefits. But I think what we most commonly think of as the microbiome are bacteria. And the reason for that is, is one, the bacteria make up the, the majority of these microorganisms that are living on and in us, but they've also been the best research. So there's just been uh, that explosion that I showed before about how bacteria can positively affect our, our health. So like I mentioned, the microbiome or these microorganisms literally live inside of every nook and cranny in and on our bodies. But look at the stat that's on the slide. This is just, it's mind blowing. Think about this. You are only about half human because we have about the same number of microorganism cells living on and in us as we are actually human cells. So just on that sheer mass, this microbiome has to be doing something incredibly important. Now your first reaction is, oh my gosh, this is disgusting. But what research has shown, like I've mentioned, is that they are so incredibly important for your health. And in fact, it's this mutualistic relationship. So if you can kind of remember your introductory high school biology, right? What is a mutualistic relationship? Well, it's this relationship where two organisms are getting a benefit from the other. And we see this throughout nature. So for example, if you think of coral and algae, the coral is giving a home for the algae to live and the algae is, is producing food for the coral. How about a honeybee and a flower? So a flower puts a tremendous amount of, of resources into making pollen and nectar to basically bribe the honeybee to come and pollinate it. These little flying paintbrushes that go around and pollinate all the different flowers. And think about this, if we were to lose all of the pollinators off of the face of the earth, we would literally never eat another fruit again. So these mutualistic relationships are not just common, but they're also essential for, for the world around us and even our own health. And when you go into the scientific literature and you look at all the different aspects of our health that the microbiome can be affecting, I mean, look at all of these, things like healthy lipid metabolism, cardiovascular health, immune health, they can actually synthesize on, on a small degree a number of nutrients like B vitamins or even vitamin K. 
We have a, a huge presence of microbiome in our health, so really uh, in our mouth, so really important for oral health. Something I'm going to kind of talk about at the end in here today is how the microbiome can actually affect brain health. So stay tuned to see how something so far away from each other can have massive benefits to our, our brain health. Um, the microbiome plays a huge role in just our overall metabolism. So they can help us with our natural detoxification process by, by helping to take a first, a first metabolic uh, approach to foreign substances that might enter our bodies but they also help us process a number of nutrients. So for example, a lot of the vitamins and minerals that we eat in our diet, they have little molecules that are, are stuck on them. And so the microbiome takes a first shot at kind of cleaving off those, those molecules that are stuck to them to actually make them active and, and so our body can utilize them. And then I think when we think about just the microbiome in general, the first thing I would guess people would say is gut health. So having a healthy microbiome in our gut is absolutely important for not just gut health, but all of the things you see here on the slide. So what is this microbiome upgrade? Well, there are three ways this, this upgrade to the new probiome will give you better results. So going into the scientific literature, we've substituted out some of the bacteria and even added completely new bacteria into the product. It's gonna give you a better balance of bacteria that are in there because if you look at the current formula of probiotic, it's really heavily skewed toward lactobacillus plantarum. So we wanted to get a better balance of bacteria overall. And there's strong reasons for this in the scientific literature. We'll talk about that in just a second. And then I think something that I'm the most excited about is that we're going to be providing a better delivery system. So we will be going from the three caplets per day down to one capsule per day. Now we have heard here and there that some people can have a hard time swallowing the, those uh, probiotic spheres. So we're doing away with those and going to a single capsule for the delivery system. And we'll talk about that in just a second. But let's come back to better bacteria and why are we saying that um, there's a, a better balance and, and better bacteria here. So let's again go back to, to basic biology. And I don't know if you'll remember that, that goofy mnemonic or, or how you memorized it, but kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species, or King Philip came over for good soup. I don't know if you remember all of that. It's ingrained in my head. But when you look at the label, what we're labeling for is actually the genus and the species. But we're going one step further and we're also putting what's called the strain designation there. So you can have the same genus and species. So in the example at the very top of this slide, Lactobacillus acidophilus, the genus and the species, what scientists can do is go in and select within a species one of these, these bacteria that might uh, be providing more of a health benefit. So the health benefit we wanna deliver, we can select down to the strain level and specifically select those strains to provide the health benefits. And also it's really important if you do get into the scientific literature that not only are you just looking for the genus and the species, but that you're also looking at the specific strains. And like I mentioned, all of these strains have very unique properties and they are specially selected for those properties. And with this new mix of, of bacteria that we have in ProBio, there are literally hundreds and hundreds of, of studies that are showing how effective these can be either individually or as blends together. So, I, I know I said we're going from three caplets down to one capsule, but I want to assure you that you're still going to be getting the same efficacious dose of 6 billion CFUs or colony forming units, a, a goofy way that scientists like to measure how much or how many of these bacteria are actually in a product. So only one capsule, but exactly the same 6 billion CFUs in, in the upgraded probiome. So now let's talk about the delivery system. So I know a lot of us like to tell the story about how 
um, BioTract can, um, BioTract, you know, can help with the survivability of these bacteria through the harsh uh, regions of the stomach and especially the upper digestive system. But we did a study in-house looking at a new delivery system that's called DR caps to compare the survivability of the bacteria, again, through that upper part of our digestive system. And what we found is that DR caps were 25% better or survived the stomach 25% better than the current formulation in BioTrack. So now we have even a better story to tell about being able to get these healthy bacteria to where they need to be in the lower part of our digestive system. Another, I think another important thing that I don't want to gloss over, and I think something that's really, really cool, especially for those of you that have international, international businesses, we were also able to unify the formula. So now we'll have one formula that can go to all of our markets around the world. Um, another change that you're going to be seeing on the label is you won't be seeing the word Wellmune on the label anymore. And you've probably seen in um, a few of our latest product releases that we're getting away from branded ingredients, at least on the label. So we're not gonna be specifically calling them out. Um, what we're actually gonna be labeling is the active ingredient that was in Wellmune. And it's up on the screen there. And again, sorry for the science words, but they're known as beta-1,3 or 1,6 uh, beta-glucans. That's just the fancy way to talk about the polysaccharides or the fiber that's actually the healthy component that's been shown to support our microbiome, but also delivering wonderful health benefits. So rather than calling out Wellmune, we're gonna be specifically testing for and labeling for the active ingredient that we want. And there's a, a few reasons for that. I mentioned we're trying to get away from calling out branded ingredients just a, across our, our product portfolio, but this also will help us with some of those international registrations. So talked a little bit about kind of the, the gut health aspect and a little bit around immune health, especially with those 1,6 and 1,3 beta-glucans. But something I, I want to just spend just a little bit of time on is the brain health aspects of a healthy microbiome. And I don't know if, if any of you out there have, have heard, but a lot of people consider our gut our second brain, right? What, what are we talking about? How can two things almost as far away as we can get in our bodies, how can they be so intimately linked? And the fact of the matter is, is there are direct connections, but then there are also these indirect connections that can happen through the normal metabolism that's happening with a healthy microbiome. So as the microbiome is digesting the foods that it eats, mostly centered around the different fibers in our diet, um, they can create a number of metabolites that can enter the bloodstream, get into circulation, cross the blood-brain barrier, and have actually direct effects on the brain. And this is just generally known as brain axis. So... A lot of things can affect this gut-brain axis, right? Our environment, our lifestyle, we hear that constantly in just about every aspect of our health. So environment, lifestyle can directly affect our brain, and it can also directly affect our, our gut microbiome. So we really need to live that healthy lifestyle, exercise, eat fruits and vegetables, to try to support as healthy of a microbiome as possible, and including supplementing with these healthy bacteria. And we know when we can get that healthy bacteria to colonize in our lower digestive system, we can have these positive effects. So a couple of ways that the gut microbiome can be affecting the brain is one, through direct communication. So there are actually nerves that are running from our brain to our stomach, to other parts of our digestive system that are directly communicating back and forth. Uh, the gut microbiome can also make a number of neurotransmitters that can get into the bloodstream and affect nerve function. But then something else the microbiome is doing is making these metabolites 
that again can get into circulation, ultimately make it to, to the brain and affect healthy brain function. And again, you might be saying, gosh, that just seems so, so crazy and foreign. But I pulled a study from the scientific literature that can illustrate that point. This study was done in mice because you could never do a study like this in humans. It's been hypothesized that if we were to sterilize ourselves of our microbiome, that we would not be able to survive for very long. So we would never risk doing these experiments in humans. But what they can do is go into mice and effectively sterilize the mice and then add back the healthy bacteria to support their healthy microbiome. And so what they did was sterilize the mouse and that would be the images going down the right hand side, kind of in that columnar fashion. And then they had the health, the mouse with the healthy microbiome there on the left. And if you just focus on the top image here and compare the left and the right, so the, the mouse with the healthy microbiome versus the sterilized mouse, you and they went in and measured gene expression. So what genes are being turned on and how active is that process? You can clearly see in the mouse with the healthy microbiome, that brain is just lit up. So some great evidence that there is this direct link through the gut microbiome and healthy brain function. So again, just a little bit, I could give whole presentations on, on any one of these, but we're so proud with this ProBio upgrade, um, especially the benefits we know it's gonna have for gut health, immune health, and brain health, especially. So just a little bit of the nitty gritty, you might be asking yourselves, well, when can I see this upgraded product? You're going to start to be seeing this at the end of this month. So um, as, as the, the current formula gets used up, we're going to be phasing in the upgraded, upgraded formula. And based on our run out analysis that our operations department does a wonderful job of monitoring inventory, um, towards the end of July, you're gonna start to see this upgraded ProBio in the vitality stacks, and then in the, in the coming months, August and so forth, you'll start to see these in all of the, the packets and, and, and the different bottles that we offer. So the vitality, the ultimate stack, activated essentials, and in your enrollment, uh, enrollment packs. And don't worry, this is just informational that it's coming. I hope you're excited as we are. Um, it's another reason why I'm so proud to work for this company that we're keeping life vantage at the state of the scientific art. So we don't just launch and forget, we keep monitoring the science, the, what the science is telling us. And as that science advances and advances and builds on itself, we're going to continue to upgrade our products. And don't worry, you don't have to take any action, okay? So you can just sit back, your subscriptions will automatically be updated. And then as this rolls out, that will just be your choice. Um, and then, so for all of the customers that, that you might have as distributors, they will also be notified uh, as well via email. So they're not caught off guard. So again, I hope you're as excited as I am. This will be coming soon. Um, let us know what you think about it.